Welcome to The Late Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And I'm coming to you tonight. I, I come to you this evening following the historic, possibly, maybe, probably, definitely not last January 6th committee hearing. <laughs> Today was the committee's 10th public session. So, we've had exactly as many hearings as we've had Batman movies. <laughs> Which is why Adam Kinzinger came dressed in his nipple suit. <laughs> Did the former president throw ketchup against the wall? <laughs> Tell me I am justice. I'm a man. <laughs> of course, since it's their 10th hearing, the committee finally filled out the, the punch card. Uh, let's see here. There you go. Uh... Ooh! Ooh, that means the former president gets a free sub. Peanut. <laughs> because... Spoiler alert, in a shocking twist ending, the January 6th panel voted to subpoena the former president. And to make sure the former president reads the subpoena, it's being printed on the wrapper of a Gordita Supreme. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's efficient. It's efficient. Supreme. Supreme, of course, that's a subpoena with a dollop of sour cream on top. <laughs> First up, Chairman Benny Thompson laid out the plan for the hearing. Today's proceeding will also be grounded in the facts, but it won't look exactly like all our other hearings. Now, I was hoping that meant they were going to present the hearing in song. <laughs> Turns out, he meant this. We'll also take a step back and look at the evidence in a broader context, providing a summary of key facts we've uncovered. For those of you who've watched our prior hearings, some of this evidence will look familiar. It was a clip show. A look back at the top moments of season one, when the former president tried to strangle a Secret Service agent, Josh Hawley scampered away like a frightened squirrel, and, of course, the very special episode where the committee got married and had a baby. <laughs> Vice Chair Liz Cheney explained what the goals of the hearing were. A key element of this committee's responsibility is to propose reforms to prevent January 6th from ever happening again. I am all for stopping future violence, but I caution against just going from January 5th to January 7th from now on. That is going to cause <laughs> chaos in the calendar industry. I mean, think of the sexy firemen. Won't someone... <laughs> think of the... Thinking of them now. California Representative Jozo Lofgren made it clear just how prepared the former president was to lie about the election results. A few days before the election, Mr. S uh, Trump also consulted with one of his outside advisors, inside activist Tom Fitton, about the strategy for election night. The select committee got this pre-prepared statement from the National Archives. As you can see, the draft statement which was sent on October 31st, declares, we had an election today, and I won. They were already planning to lie about the election results as early as October 31st. That's the spookiest Halloween ever. <laughs> Trick or treason, it's a boo d'etat. <laughs> now to... <laughs> woo, woo. To drive home the premeditated nature of this, Lofgren played a tape of White House advisor Steve Bannon explaining the president's strategy before the election, in fact, also on Halloween. And what Trump's going to do is just declare victory, right? He's going to declare victory. Also, if Trump is, if Trump is losing mm. by 10 or 11 o'clock at night, mm. it's going to be even crazier. Cause he, no, because he's going to sit right there and say they stole it. I'm yeah, going to uh, agree. I'm directing the attorney general... Mm to shut down all ballot places in all 50 states, it's going to be no. He's not going out easy. Trump, if Biden's winning, Trump is going to do some crazy Usually, usually when you hear someone lay out an evil plan that baldly, James Bond is strapped to a table with a laser pointed at his balls. <laughs> the select committee also played some of the footage from a documentary crew that was following Roger Stone. I really do suspect it would still be up in the air. 
But when that happens, the key thing to do is to claim victory. Possession is nine tenths of the law. No, we won. You. Sorry, over. We won. Yeah. You're wrong. You. Actually, Roger, Biden won. You. Sorry, over. We won. You're wrong. You. <laughs> If it, if it wasn't clear enough that the president's supporters were responsible for the violence, they said it, point blank, like the leader of the Proud Boys, Enrique, Enrique Terrio. Terrio, along with other Proud Boys, has been charged with multiple crimes uh, concerning the attack on January 6th, including seditious conspiracy. During the attack, Terrio sent a message to other Proud Boys claiming, we did that. Okay, not the best idea to claim credit for violence addition while it's happening. But to be fair, they're not called the smart boys. <laughs> the committee. <laughs> Ooh, my darling. The committee made clear that the ex-president was well aware that he had lost. Cassidy Hutchinson put it in plain terms. He had said something to the effect of, I don't want people to know we lost, Mark. This is embarrassing. No, losing isn't embarrassing. You know what's embarrassing? That you were ever our president, you traitorous dingleberry. <laughs> now, great image. It's nice to paint the picture. Oh, my God. The committee recounted that the ex-president lost 61 court cases where he tried and failed to prove there was voter fraud, then showed testimony from former White House figures saying he should have respected those rulings, including his daughter, Ivanka, who, I will remind you, was a White House staffer. Never forget how crazy that place was. <laughs> Jim? Ivanka, do you, do you believe the president's obligated to abide by the rulings of the courts? I do. Ouch. <laughs> Not the I do he was hoping for from Ivanka. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, remember, the ex-president and his allies' continuing excuse, the thing they've said a million times, that this wasn't planned. It was just a spontaneous outburst of coordinated violence. Well, check out this text from an organizer of the January 6th riot. We obtained a text message that one rally organizer sent on January 4th. In part, it reads that, quote, POTUS is going to have us march there, slash the Capitol, and POTUS is going to just call for it unexpectedly. Did you notice that? Unexpectedly? <laughs> Buddy, the quotes don't make it less illegal. <laughs> I like to see this guy get pulled over. Officer, I'm not drunk. I am heavily inebriated <laughs> because my wife took the children <laughs> and the house because of my serious drinking problem. <laughs> the committee had all sorts of new damning details. Congressman Adam Schiff showed Secret Service messages demonstrating that agents were aware of armed supporters of the ex-president gathering outside the metal detectors. By 9.09 .09 that morning, the Secret Service could also see that many rally goers were assembled outside the security perimeter. One agent emailed, possibly because they have stuff that couldn't come through, would probably be an issue with this crowd. Just a thought. Okay. But if it's an imminent threat, why are you putting it in an email? <laughs> to a White House mail list, subject line, no biggie. Hey, y'all, just want to ping you, uh, Ray, outbreak of civil war. Let's pencil a meeting on the calendar. No worries, if not, thanks, gotta go, being trampled. <laughs> Now, the White House knew just how bad this was going to get. In the lead-up, advisor Jason Miller emailed the former president's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, a link to a page that was blatantly planning violence. The linked web page had comments about the joint session of Congress on January 6th. Take a look at some of those comments. Gallows don't require electricity. If the filthy commie maggots try to push their fraud through, there will be hell to pay. Okay, that is terrifying. But we do have a new nickname for the former president. Hell to pay. <laughs> we have to take a quick break here. 
But don't go away, because when we come back, I'll be right here with the exciting conclusion of tonight's monologue. Stick around.